Hey guys, it's Thomas, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can manage the state of your website using data binding. To accomplish this, we're going to use a JavaScript library called MobX, which allows you to store the state of a page within an object and then tells the page to automatically re-render certain components whenever the state is modified. In order to learn more about state management using MobX, we're going to build a Bitcoin exchange calculator. We're building this page because there's a lot of different components on here that change based on the current state inside of the data. So whenever I have a certain value here, you can see that the value in the currency that you have selected changes. When I change the currency, you can see that not only does the value change, but the chart down here completely shifts to the new currency that you're using. In the traditional way that you would build this, you would have to call a function on every single component that changes the view somehow. But what we're gonna do is use mob X to only change the data and then re-render each Wix component whenever the data changes. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is click on public and backend. Then we're going to hit on install packages from NPM. Next, we're going to type in mobx and then click install. After this package has finished installing, we can use the code anywhere on our Velo website. Let's head over to the page code now. So in order to use the package, we're going to have to import two different functions that are going to allow us to manage state. So let's do that now. We're going to type import auto run and observable from mobx. What we're going to do now is create a variable that stores the state for the entire page using the observable function from mobx. So right above the onready, we're going to say const state is equal to observable, call the function. And then within it, we're going to create a set of variables that are going to store data for the state of the page. The first variable that we're going to create is called BTC amount. And by default, we're going to make it so the exchange calculator has one inside of that input. Next thing we're going to store is the rate. So the exchange rate between one Bitcoin and the current currency. So we're going to add in a initial value but we're going to change this so that whenever the page loads, it gets the current rates. So we're going to say rate is equal to 40,000. Now, this represents this input right here and this input right here. The next thing that we're going to do is create a function that returns the value of the amount of Bitcoin the user entered. This is something that's called a computed value because it's entirely based on variables that are saved within the state. So to get this started, we're going to write a comma and then we're going to start this function with get, which tells uh, mob X that this is a computed value. Then we're going to call it current value. And inside this function, what we'll do is we'll return this dot btc amount times this dot rate and basically what this is going to do is give us the actual value based on the current currency speaking of currency let's actually add another state variable that's going to keep track of the current currency Now we have a way to save how much Bitcoin the user has entered, what's the current exchange rate based on the current currency, 
and also saving exactly which currency we're talking about. What we're going to have to do next is create a way that when the user goes back to the interface and changes the number that's within here, then the actual state will change as well. To do this, we're going to go back to the code. We're going to go to on ready. And then we're going to select that input. So we're going to say dollar W hashtag BTC amount. And next, we're going to use a uh, event handler that detects whenever the user actually enters a key. On the code panel right here, we can see a few different event handlers that we might want to use. In our case, we're going to use on key press. Then we're going to add a callback function. And then inside of here, what we basically want to do is detect what's entered into the input box as soon as this is triggered. However, on key press happens before the actual value of that text input changes. So what we're going to have to do is create a set timeout that allows us to wait a little bit of time and then wait until the value of the actual text input has changed. So then we can get that value and then send it over to the state. So I'm going to call set timeout and I'm going to set the timeout to 10 milliseconds. And then inside of here, I'm going to have to write a function that allows you to change the state. So we're going to go back to our observable function up here. And what we're going to do now is add a new function. This new function is going to be called update value or update BTC amount. So you might have noticed that I did not write get because this function will not be a computed value. In this case, this is something that is known as an action. Actions are functions that can be called by the UI in order to modify the state. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot BTC amount. So we're accessing the current state. And we're going to say whatever value is passed through, we're going to set that into the state. So we're going to say amount here. And then we're going to set BTC amount to the amount that's passed in into the parameter. Now we can go back down here and we can actually call this function. So we're going to say state dot update BTC amount. And then what we're going to do here is pass over the event dot target dot value, which represents what's stored inside of that text input. Now we've made it so the state is explicitly changed whenever the user types into the text input box for the BTC amounts that they want to convert. What we're going to do next is make it so the view actually changes only when the state changes, but it's going to do this automatically without us explicitly having to tell the function when to run. So what we're going to do is create our first auto run function. So right underneath, we're going to call auto run, give it a callback. And then we're going to say that whenever the state of BTC amount changes, we want the actual view to show that inside of that text input. So we're going to say, dollar W BTC amount dot value is equal to state dot BTC amount. And then we're going to create another auto run function that will run whenever the BTC amount changes. So when that changes, we'll want the actual second input 
to show the value of the amount that they typed in. And for this, we're going to use the computed function that we created earlier called get current value. And this is going to return the current value of the amount that the user typed in based on the current rate. So we're going to say state dot current value. And now if we save and preview what we have so far. You can see that initially, since the state changes to one, one is displayed under the Bitcoin amount. And then for the currency value, you can see that this is the rate times the Bitcoin, since we set it to be 40,000 by default. So what we're gonna do is change the rate or change the amount of Bitcoins to two. And you can see that automatically the view has changed because we changed the state. This is different than in the past where we would have had to create functions that call each other in order to change the view. But instead, since we're using mob X and it only runs the function whenever it detects the state changing, automatically the view has changed. In this video, you learned about the basics of managing state with mob X. We use the observable function in order to store the state for this entire Bitcoin exchange calculator. Then we use auto run functions to automatically update the view whenever the state is changed. This is a concept that's known as data binding. In our next video, we're going to go over how to implement other functionality such as the currency, the refresh button, and specifically how to use tables within Velo to render out basic information every time the user loads a new currency. If you want to see or modify any of the code we've written so far, click below in the description where you'll find a template. Stay tuned for the next part of this series.